Die Wissenschaft kann sehr viel. Die kann Science can do very much. It might be able to develop methods to fly to Mars. It would be very expensive, but it would be feasible. Science has to be taken seriously, for it deals with reality, with truth, definitely. It is not the truth, however, but we only approach truth step by step. Man has certain presuppositions about what he wants to observe. You can't do without this. He has a theory which he wants to confirm. So we run in a cycle from a presupposition, which can be very subjective, and then we want to see if our imagination is really correct, and observe trying to confirm or refute it. Refuting is actually more interesting, as this leads to new theories, new observations. So this is the cycle of science, which slowly moves forward in an area which seems inexhaustible. So by far we have not yet reached the end of investigation. You start from your presupposition, from your preconceived opinion, and start with the first interpretation, an explanation. This doesn't need to be the correct one, and it's still rather subjective. Then the process goes on. It might be falsified. New elements might come in. Hence, step by step, the subjective element is eliminated. Observations are the facts which everyone can measure. This is objective. It should be repeatable. What you conclude, that is the explanation of these results, can be wrong. It's a theory, and any theory can be wrong. Any. In fact, this is the interesting moment. When it's wrong, then we make progress. We must always anticipate that a theory can be wrong. A measurement, an observation, must be reproducible in order to be valid and accepted. It must be applicable. It must be independent of the observer. At the same time, this limits the scope of science, as everything is excluded which can't be studied scientifically. And this is most of life. This is love and arts. It includes religion too. All this is not perceived objectively, but includes the subjective personality of the person. One could also react purely rational, but one must also resonate in some way with that reality. This is not part of science, and so we will not find God there, and we won't be able to prove him. We can only find hints. This is the methodology of physics. We observe and explain what we've observed. How would one observe God? This is not simple. In physics we presuppose that we have mathematical models, or otherwise we can't explain it. Why can't we prove God? Also, with regard to the star formation, we must say that we can't see God. Nevertheless, we can believe that God is the creator of the stars. This might be important to understand. You can't prove God by his traces in the sand. You can say that there in the sand at the sea a human being has passed by. You can see his traces. I have seen that there are human beings who leave traces. Then I can say this evidence is compelling, that there was a human being who has walked this way. But if I don't know God, then I don't know how I should look for his traces. Are they ten times larger in a shoe size of 317? No, if I don't know God, I can't prove him. But I can say that I know him from another source, from my own life. Then I can say that this is similar. And there is so much which is astonishing. So many coincidences seem to occur, or rather divine interventions. This points me personally to a divine being that has planned the whole thing and my life.
Wesen, das das Ganze und mein Leben geplant hat. In, diesem In this sense, I can speak of a plan when I speak about my own life. And once I know God from this experience, then I can also say that I can see his traces. But I cannot prove God from this. I can only find evidence.